I thought, okay, it changes the dynamic and it's white who has to give it. So you give up your weakness, you don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> If you give up your okay. weakness, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Nice. Hi, Nihal. Uh, hi. Nihal, first of all, congrats and hi. It's uh, nice to see you do so well. I had a few questions for you. Um, how did you prepare for this match? Uh, I I did not really prepare for this match. I played uh, like Spanish league and Spanish league and European club club cup. So I was already played like, some ping pong. I heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how did you What evaluate you that uh, position, Nihal, with the pawns on f5, d5? Oh. Uh, Okay, I knew this structure from the opening, so I I I knew that if white plays like this, black can go into the structure. And okay, objectively, I don't know, I don't know how it is exactly. Maybe black is like very slightly worse, but I thought it's a very solid position. Despite the double pawns, like you're never allowing the white knight to get to like h5 in some way. So knight e2 is just position b6. Mm-hmm. Also, the c pawn can get dangerous sometimes. Mm-hmm. I thought thought it's just a solid position, and also I chose this because I thought it's okay, it's not played too much at the top level, so I thought he might not have like checked it for the candidates. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, it's a very interesting point, a very interesting point that you make that uh, you are trying to in some way you know, not get into this preparation. And I we were very impressed by this uh, with uh, I, what we uh, thought that was this. Rook B4 and Rook A4. How did you come up come about about this? Uh, yeah, I was I was very happy about that. Uh, well, I thought okay, Rook B4 was sort of I don't know. It was like I had to play. I thought mm-hmm. Rook A4 was I was really happy with this decision. It's, I thought okay, it changes the dynamic and it's white who has to give it. So you give up your weakness, you don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> If you give up your okay. weakness, you don't have to worry about it. Anymore. I wanted to ask you one more question about the game before we move on to the second one. At no point you were concerned with the bishop on e6. You always felt like it is solid. Yeah, I thought it's it's fine because it looks a bit bad, but also I did not really see how White can exploit it. So it was okay. And the second game you started with the c3 move order. What what was the story behind this? Yeah, I was I was very confused after the first game, like what to play. Mm-hmm. Like I did not expect to win the first game with black pawns. So, mm-hmm. like, what do I play now? Because c3, c5 can get. Uh, that's what he has played more, and it can get quite complicated. No, my initial idea was actually to take on c5 mm-hmm. because bishop a4. I have queen a3, and I think I'm not losing it either. Yeah, and I'm also threatening b4 and yeah. It's in fact black who loses. Instead of queen a three, maybe you could even do c d six like Carl said. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, I did not even see c d six. Yeah. C d six bishop b three a b three. Yes, they got it. Probably yeah, this, so. it also looks terrible for black. Yeah. So okay, you chose a four, a six. Also, I was makes sense. I guess he wants to go b five at some point. Queen c. Yeah, I guess. These questions you just make moves. It's hard to yeah. really come up with a plan. I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then you reach this uh, position with uh, I, knight to uh, knight also, G5, right? Knight on G5. Also, mm-hmm. just one question: After bishop into D6, bishop into D6, did you uh, like? Did you see it that you cannot take on B5, or did you miss it from afar? I when I played F5, definitely I sort of missed bishop B5. Hmm. And like I saw it immediately after I played, that doesn't help. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but okay, I was still very solid. And, and you got this beautiful later. knight on g5, and suddenly a lot of tactics were working in your favor. We were constantly yeah. looking at bishop g6 ideas, for example. Yes, so, yes. Because, you know, so when you played g3, we were actually looking at the variation bishop g6. So interesting. Knight e6, rook e6, rook e6, bishop f7, and we mentioned that queen g5 does not work because of bishop e6, rook e6, bishop h2 check. And yeah. uh, as soon as you played g3, we we're like, oh, he saw all of this, and you know, he prevented bishop h2 check. I'll, I'll just clarify that I saw none of this. Just do not want to get mated on the back. 
and free is a very intuitive move no it's a very good move avoiding yeah. all these bishop h2 checks in the future yes yes and also just clearing the back hands ha huh. and after jeeting you put your neck you got this opportunity and now you are going to take no i totally missed it here because uh, now uh, um you would have this move queen g5 and this bishop h2 yeah, check yeah, so this was the uh, skip the side of probably gone for this i did not uh huh so you went back knight h3 uh here. again you wanted to create some and it was very nice when you actually went knight f4 so let's go a little further a3 pawn into queen a5 knight f4 and here i am telling harshit yeah now definitely wing will take on f4 queen f4 yeah. we see this position and harshit is like no but he could also take on c3 and allow knight h5 <laughs> and play that and we was jubilated you know like oh my god he missed this did you yeah that was unbelievable to- action so very very strange miss of some like miss by somebody of being strategic No, I was like, I was just saying it for fun, you know. Like, I was just saying, yeah, yeah. or maybe he could play queen c3 and blunder knight h5 and me. <laughs> and the next thing I see, I see queen c3. I thought it's just my version, but he actually played it. Yeah. In then you took and even just to quickly finish it off. Um, I really yeah, like. Yeah, I'm very happy with queen e3 here. Sorry. So, I am very happy that I continued with queen e3 here. Was okay. It was still a bit. Mm-hmm. It was a bit risky because like I had like. around 25 seconds and here lot yeah. of time but i thought i had to i had to go for it here like you don't get so many chances there in supply like this mm-hmm. and it honestly does look very very good for white uh, right like i don't know how you were assessing it during the game i guess yes. it's different yeah i saw this plan with queen e3 and knight f6 and it's very very hard for black to do and you just finished him off um, yeah in good fashion Night. I just missed that d5 was coming, but luckily it didn't matter. And now you're playing uh, Levon uh, in the quarterfinals in Canada. How how do you see that matchup? Oh, it will be a very interesting match. Just a just a fantastic experience. Yeah. We are very happy that you have qualified for the finals, uh, which will be held in Toronto. And uh, you're playing Cap de Ag next. Is that right? And then you'll go to Canada directly. Surely, I, I thought that I, I thought I have to like it's either of those. So it's now I guess I go issues. to they're clashing. Mm-hmm. Oh, then play Canada. So you have to make a decision. Yeah, I guess so. Canada is. Yeah. Okay, we hope to see you in Canada, Nihal, for sure, and we hope. that you will go even further we wish you the very best for your match against aronian so thank you so much nihal for your insights it was a pleasure rooting for you and seeing you play such fantastic chess today we hope that you go in the same way ahead in this tournament uh, thank you so much